Welcome to Powerboat Television. I'm Steve Bull. This week we're doing a ride along with the RCMP in the Thousand Islands. Even during high speed runs, rough conditions, and tight turns in the standard rigid bottom inflatables, the big black beasts that are the most common in their fleet, it's very secure and comfortable. But patrolling the waters is no easy feat, and as an example of just how complex it is, we've joined the RCMP on a day when they're taking part in a joint training exercise in the Thousand Islands. Everyone from local fire department boats, to the OPP, another common site on Ontario waterways, to conservation officers, and park wardens, and the Coast Guard, this was quite the gathering. And when you get them all together, you see just how complex the safety and security systems are, which is why a day like today is helpful, getting multiple agencies together. The international border makes this all the more complicated, and the bad guys know it. Criminals in the past have, have taken advantage or exploited the borders in the past, but where exactly that scenario, we weren't able to cross the border, our, our jurisdictional authorities stopped at the border, and then if the, there was no Americans on the other side, law enforcement on the other side, there was nothing we could do about it. 200 years ago in 1817, the rush baggage Agreement was signed limiting naval presence on the Great Lakes, but that didn't stop policing. And that dotted line on the map marking the border was effectively a brick wall. Now, there's a way around it. There were a few pilot projects over the years, including Vancouver during the Olympics, Toronto during the G8 and G20 summit, and right here along the Detroit River between Detroit, Michigan and Windsor, Ontario, both in 2005 and again a year later when Detroit hosted Super Bowl 40. Now officially, the program is known as the Integrated Cross-Border Maritime Law Enforcement Operations. But that's a mouthful. Instead, they simply refer to it as Ship Rider. This ship rider allows us to pursue a vessel into the States or from the States into Canada, eliminating that, uh, that, that advantage that the criminals have uh, along the borders. And radios aren't always compatible with our U.S. partners or their radios aren't always compatible with ours. So, so this, this makes it a lot smoother uh, with our U.S. Uh, Coast Guard uh, counterparts. Uh, they have a good communication system with uh, other law enforcement uh, on land and uh, we work with the uh, Border Patrol as well as, uh, as other law enforcement on the U.S. and on Can Canadian side. And right here is a great example of why the Ship Rider program is so important. International waters can be tricky on a big open lake or an ocean, but sometimes you get into really narrow areas. Right here is known as the International Rift. Behind me I can almost touch Ontario, that's Canada. Right over there, just beside you, that's New York. We're only 20, 30 feet apart right here. You could throw a bag across. So patrolling this international waterway right here is very difficult. But with the Ship Rider program, you have US and Canadian authorities on one boat. Makes it a little more straightforward. It's so narrow that even small bow riders traversing this channel are riding along the border to stay in deep enough water in some sections, which makes jurisdictional decisions almost impossible. The cross-border initiative is effectively the policing response to the criminal's challenge, catch me if you can. The ship rider basically allows us to eliminate the, uh, the border between the two countries. Uh, we have authorities with the designation, we have authority to enforce the laws on the U.S. side when, uh, when we're with our uh, U.S. counterparts. We work under their direction. And then when we are, we're in Canada, it's vice versa. The U.S. Coast Guard have the same authorities in Canada under our direction. But even with the U.S. on Canadian boat or Canada on U.S. boat system, it's not a policing free-for-all. You won't see American police or Coast Guard plying Canadian waters or the Mounties in U.S. waters by themselves. That's how we keep the sovereignty of each country in check. So we don't have a law enforcement officer from the U.S. working in Canada on his own. He has to work under the direction of the Canadian officer and the, the, same, is, the same applies on the U.S. side. The pilot project and the idea of this goes back more than a decade. But if you haven't heard of it, it's because it's still quite new. 
The legislation was actually signed off by both our governments uh, on the U.S. side and on the Canadian side in 2012. So then the permanent units were created, the two first units were created in, uh, in Vancouver and Windsor. The unit we're following, the St. Lawrence Detachment, based out of Kingston, is only a couple years old. And there's yet another one in Niagara. The one here in the Thousand Islands is a no-brainer. The border weaves in and out of the islands, and these guys are good. The boats, the big motors, and the skill of the officers mean they will catch you, and they can get right up on you as this touch-and-go demonstrated. But it's not just criminals in high pursuit taking advantage of the border that will meet the shiprider crew. It's you and me for routine checks if we accidentally drift across the border or take a wrong turn around one of the islands. And if so, you'll hear this standardized greeting. Hi, my name is Corporal Withers. I'm with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. My team and I are part of the Shiprider program. We're specially trained and cross-designated to enforce laws on both sides of the border and shared waterways. Which exact laws they enforce depend on where the stop takes place. Yeah, we are still in Canadian waters. Just notice you folks cross the uh, border there, just conducting a customs check on your vessel and all the persons on board, okay? What's the purpose of your travel today? 44 degrees, 22 decimal 253 minutes north by 75 degrees, 55 decimal 296 minutes west. And I have an Ontario registered vessel to run when you're ready. It's not just front lines that have joined forces. Vessels stopped by a shiprider have their documents checked against both U.S. and Canadian databases no matter where they're stopped. Go ahead, OCC. That's right, that is coming back to a C-Ray flight, uh, 12 meter, 39 foot. Uh, Delta Charlie. The stops don't take too long if you have all your documentation in order. And, of course, you're not a criminal. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> the Shiprider program will be reviewed, but based on the success this team alone has had, they expect it to stick around for a long time. And just in case you're still thinking this boat doesn't look like it's that fast and you're tempted to outrun it or outmaneuver it, here's what happened when I said, seriously, what can that boat do? I mean, when you really push it. Pretty cool, eh?